Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today I'm doing another quarterly update on how my neck alley reviews and requests and reading are going. It's not going well. <laughs> I originally did this video back in February talking about all of the neck alley books that I still had for review, things I had requested, and I, in, in my in my head and I think in what I said I was like, yeah, maybe if I'm more transparent about all the things I'm requesting that I have to read, I will request fewer things because that's a goal that I want to have. So that has not happened at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> so um, I am here to update you on how things are going. Um, and I have to tell you, since we last spoke, I have been approved for 37 more titles <laughs> on that galley. 37. I'm doing so great at not requesting things, right? Oh man, it's, um, yeah, I, do I have a problem? Yes, I hope this makes some of you guys feel better, but I have been getting to things and even some of those new ones I've requested, I, I have now read. So we are going to go over how, how I'm doing on this, basically. If you haven't seen that first video, I will link it up above for you if you want to kind of see what books I had requested as of February going into this year. Um, I'm not going to rehash all of those books. What I will say is that of all the books I talked about in that video, there are only six that I have not yet now either read or attempted to read. And I have had a few DNFs. Um, which probably means I'm not always doing the best job selecting books for myself. So we're going to look through the books that I've DNF'd that I had requested for a review from Neck Alley and see if there's a pattern in terms of genre. Um, I suspect there probably are some patterns and I'm trying to get better about selecting books for myself. And for anybody who's wondering, because I've had this question before, when I DNF a book from Neck Alley, I don't rate it on Goodreads, but I do write a review talking about what I thought of the part that I read and why I chose to DNF it. And I submit that review through NetGalley. I don't just say that I returned it unfinished. I do actually write like a one or two paragraph review for it. So um, as an FYI, in case anyone's wondering. Okay, so um, how many DNFs have I had? <laughs> so far, I have DNF'd eight books from NetGalley this year. And of those DNFs, I don't know, it's it's honestly, it's actually kind of a mix. I don't really see a lot of patterns. There's some YA contemporary, there's an adult romance, there was a nonfiction title where I just didn't get on well with the audiobook, there was a YA thriller. So kind of a mix of things. But again, I do write reviews for the books that I end up DNFing. And in terms of ratings for the books that I finish, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I have ratings as low as two, but also four of the Neck Alley books that I've read so far this year, I gave six stars to you, and six stars is what I give to a favorite of the year or favorite of all time. So the fact that four of the books I've requested from Neck Alley have made my list of favorites for the year I think is pretty great. If you're wondering which books those are, I will tell you. So the books that I originally had on Neck Alley and gave six stars to that are going to be on my list of favorite books of the year are Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. Yes, I have purchased copies since of all of these after reading them for review. Malice by Heather Walter. She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinlan and A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. So I think that's a pretty good hit rate, to be honest. Uh, that is out of, how many have I read so far? That is out of the 42 books that I've either finished reading or DNF'd. That includes the eight DNF's, but uh, that, that's a pretty good hit rate. I'm, I'm, I'm not displeased with that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through all of the books that I have gotten approved for on NetGalley since my last video. If it's a book that I have already read, I will tell you that and tell you what I rated it. Um, but probably most of these are going to be books that I have not yet read, but I'm planning on reading in the coming months. So here we go. <laughs> this video is going to be such a pain to edit because I'm gonna have to insert like all the thumbnails for all the little books. It's fine. Uh, okay, so 
First, I had an audiobook from NetGalley. This is Why Wakanda Matters, edited by Sheena C. Howard. I have read this and I gave it four stars. It was really great. It's a nonfiction collection of essays using Wakanda and Black Panther as a jumping off point for talking about issues surrounding Black community and mental health and identity. It, it was great. I really enjoyed it. Another audio review copy I got approved for was Digital Nomads by Rachel A. Woldoff and Robert C. Litchfield. This is another one that I have read and I liked it okay. I gave it three and a half stars. It was an interesting concept but I did have some issues with the full execution. It's another nonfiction title that it was an ethnography of global expats living in Bali and working remotely. You guys, I think I was wrong. I guess I had five six stars. I must have miscounted because a Another one was Careless Whispers by Cynthia Williams. Um, I really love this. One of my favorite romances I've read this year. It's like soapy family drama, really great enemies to lovers romance. I absolutely loved it. And that was another one that I got approved for after this. I also got approved for an audio review copy of The Drowning Kind by Jennifer McMahon. I read this for a like th mystery thriller or horror reading vlog a while back where I read four, I think four books that I had been approved for on NetGalley and I gave it four stars. I liked it. I also got approved for One Thing Leads to a Lover by Susanna Craig. This is another one that I have read. I enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. I think this is a really underhyped historical romance series that has some like sort of spy elements to it. I don't know. I, I thought it was great. Then I was approved for Every Body Shines, edited by Cassandra Newbold. This is another one that I've read. It was an anthology of short stories by YA authors that supposedly this like body positive thing about fat characters. I was very disappointed with this. While the marketing makes it sound like it's going to be joyful, there was a lot of trauma in it. You, all of these that I have read, you can see my reviews on Goodreads if you want a more in-depth look, but I gave this one two and a half stars and was not a fan. Then I was approved for an audio review copy of African Europeans by Olivette Otele, and this is one that I DNF'd because I was having trouble with the audio narration. The the pacing and the pronunciation was like made it really tough to follow the nonfiction information, so it was much as content is still something I'm interested in. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get on with the audiobook, so I DNF'd it. Then I got approved for In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. I recently finished reading this and will be talking about it more in my mid-month wrap-up, so stay tuned for more details, but I loved it. It was dark and bloody and really queer and I, it was great. I gave it five stars. <laughs> I've also pre-ordered a finished copy. <laughs> then I was approved for The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. They're a well-known writing duo that does adult contemporary rom-coms, and this is probably the next book that I'm going to be reading as I'm recording this. I'm finishing up an e-arc and then this will be the next one that I start, so I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I was also approved for How to Find a Princess by Alyssa Cole. This one I am currently reading. I'm almost done with it. I have like 25% of the book left to read. And it, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me, honestly. Um, I think this one was too much of a slow burn. I'm having a good time with it, but it's not perfect. I feel like this is probably going to be in like the like three to three and a half star range for me. I'm still enjoying it, but it wasn't quite what I hoped for. Then we have The Ivies by Alexa Dunn. I also read this one for a reading vlog and I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. Caveat, I am kind of friends with Alexa, but I really enjoyed this. It's super soapy and has lots of juicy twists and turns. It's kind of like Mean Girls and Gossip Girl meets competitive college admissions and murder. It's great. I, I had a good time with it. Then I was approved for The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, which I'm really excited for. I'm going to probably be starting this one pretty soon. This is another audio review copy and I don't remember a ton about this. I think it's like a dark academia thriller, adult thriller that I've heard people talk about, so I'm excited to give it a try. I was also approved for The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I've also pre-ordered a finished copy of this because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. I've loved other things from Tasha Suri. This is the start of a new adult fantasy series that she's writing. 
Her writing is stunning and this one also has a sapphic relationship. It's two priestesses who fall in love, plus there's lots of political intrigue. I think this one is going to be phenomenal. Then we have The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu. Look at that cover. I mean that cover is absolutely stunning. It is a collection of fantasy short stories by the author of Monstrous, which I've really enjoyed. I don't really know anything else about this, but the cover. The cover is gorgeous. <laughs> and as a heads up, I think there's only one more book on this list that I've already read. So we're pretty much getting into all the things that are on my forthcoming TBR. Next we have a historical romance. This is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. Again, really pretty cover. It looks like a fun historical romance. I hope it doesn't disappoint me. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Return of the Sorceress by Silvia Moreno Garcia, who's become one of my favorite authors, kind of an auto buy, auto read author for me. This is a fantasy novella. And I have also pre ordered a finished copy of this one. They're coming out as special editions from Subterranean Press and they look gorgeous, but I also have the e arc. Then I have This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. This is a YA fantasy that looks really great, really witchy, and a little bit dark. I liked but didn't love Kaylin's debut novel, um, but I'm really hopeful for this one. Then we've got One Week to Claim It All by Adriana Herrera, and I'm also supposed to be getting a physical copy of this in the mail, which is exciting. I've really enjoyed Adriana's contemporary romances. They're frequently featuring queer characters. This is her first Harlequin category romance, and it has a fat heroine, which I'm very excited to read. Next up is Small Favors by Erin. I, I think this is a YA thriller. I don't know much about it. I just know that this is one of the most beautiful covers I've ever seen, and I was immediately like, yes, please. <laughs> Like, is that a good reason to request things? Probably not. No, I, I, I mean, I'm sure I looked at the description and it must have looked good, but a lot of it was the cover, if we're being honest. Then we have Curses by Lish McBride. This looks fascinating. It's a YA gender flipped retelling of Beauty and the Beast, where the girl is the beast. Very interested to see how this one goes. Then for the final other one that I have actually read, we have A Psalm for the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. I got approved for this e arc before I got a physical arc and I ended up reading the physical arc, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it four and a half stars and it's kind of stuck with me. I'm really excited for this one. Then we've got Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This is her adult fantasy debut and it's a retelling of The Lady of Shalott. So very interested to see how that one goes. <laughs> so many books. I warned you ahead of time. Next we have Isn't It Bromantic by Lissa K. Adams. I really love the Bromance Book Club series and this is the next one. I, I've read all of them. I've enjoyed all of them. So of course I wanted the next one. I'm probably going to buy it also. We also have another historical romance, The Viscount Made Me Do It by Diana Quincy. And I want to say I requested this because I, I want to say the heroine is Middle Eastern and its own voices. I think that's right. I will put on the screen whether that's correct or not, but I think that was that was why and the, the premise sounded interesting. Then we have Mark of the Wicked by Georgia Bowers. This is a creepy YA debut fantasy about a young witch trying to unravel the mystery of who's framing her for dark magic. Then Sisters of Reckoning by Charlotte Nicole Davis is the second book in a duology that I've been waiting for, waiting for and waiting for. I absolutely loved the first one. This is like fantasy western with a girl gang and queer romances and it it's it's great. We did get a cover change on these which there I honestly I I see why they did it but I really liked the original cover. Then what I'm very excited for is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. Disney is releasing a line of adult romances that are contemporary retellings of fairy tales. And the very first one is from Julie Murphy. So we have a fat heroine. It's a retelling of Cinderella. I'm so curious to see how this is. And I really hope it's good. Next up is Requiem of Silence by Elle Penelope. This is the final book in her fantasy series. I've read all of the books so far. I've really enjoyed them. The first book is like 
good but not the best but they get significantly better and I'm always sad when I see people stop after the first book because they like hoped it would be better than it is but seriously like if you've tried the first book and it wasn't quite your cup of tea at least try book two because they get very good and this is the final book in the series so I'm excited to see what happens. I also have Redemptor by Jordan Ifuego. This is the second book in the Ray Bearer duology. I loved Ray Bearer. It was one of my favorite books of last year. I'm very excited for this. Then we have Battle Royal by Lucy Parker, which is the start of a new series that she's doing, a contemporary romance with royals, which is, is always fun. I, I'm kind of a sucker for that. We also have Living Beyond Borders by Margarita Longoria. So this is a YA anthology of short stories, essays, poems, and more from a bunch of authors about growing up Mexican in America, which sounds fantastic. Next up is Devil in the Device by Laura Beth Johnson. I don't love this cover. I know, I know, but I'm so excited for this book because the first one just blew me away. It's the second book in another duology. Like, is it just me or duology seem to be like the thing now? I kind of miss longer series, maybe not trilogies as much. Anyway, but it's the second book in a duology. It's a YA sci-fi thriller with lots of twists and turns and I'm very very interested to see how it wraps up. Then we have The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh and in case you're wondering when these things are coming out I guess I should have been telling you this. Um, this is the first book that I have coming out in September so everything up to this point has been like going through August and then I have a handful of books that are like September to November. My basically I have okay what do I have I'll, I'll tell you hold on because as I'm filming this it is May right? and I've read most of my May releases. I have three more that I need to finish, one of them which I'm almost done with, so three more May releases. Then we have nine June releases, which is a little excessive, I know. Seven July releases, 10 August releases. I'm doing real great at this like not requesting things thing, right? <laughs> not great. And then so far I have three September releases, one October release, and one November release that I've been approved for so far. It's a lot guys. It's a lot. I do read a lot of books but it's a lot. Okay so um, my first September release is The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh. I really love Sarah. I love Sarah's books and this is the first book in a new series that I think is like horror about a haunted house with a sapphic relationship but yeah it just it looks great and I, I enjoy her books so I'm excited about that. Then we've got The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer which is an adult contemporary romance featuring Jewish characters which is cool. And then the final September release is Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray. This is her debut YA fantasy. The cover is stunning and uh, the premise of this also just looked really cool. So it's like a girl who's indentured to the night zoo who cares for like magical creatures. I don't know it sounds like it maybe will be dark and interesting so I'm looking forward to that. Then for October we have The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. This cover is really beautiful and the premise sounds interesting. It says death is her destiny. Half British Reaper, half Japanese Shinigami. Ren Scarborough has been collecting souls in the London streets for centuries. Expected to obey the harsh hierarchy of the Reapers who despise her, Ren conceals her emotions and avoids her tormentors as best she can. When her failure to control her Shinigami a abilities drives Ren out of London, she flees to Japan to seek the acceptance she's never gotten from her fellow Reapers. Anyway, this just looks really interesting. We have a biracial heroine. The author is also biracial. Um, yeah, just that looked really interesting. And then lastly, I have Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. This one is coming out in November. And this one is a Jamaican inspired fantasy with heavy romance elements from what I can tell. So it looks interesting. So there you go. Those are <laughs> all of the new titles that I've requested on NetGalley and have been approved for. So what have we learned from this? Basically there are so many books coming out that I want to read and I have a problem because I keep requesting all of them and then have to read them all and uh, maybe stress myself out sometimes. <laughs> so if you can relate, comment down below and let me know how you manage your neck alley requests. Somebody needs to like take away my neck alley <laughs> access so 
so I can't keep requesting things. But I'm constantly checking and I'm like, ooh, well that looks interesting. I want to read that. It, it's a problem. It's a problem. But I have also found some really amazing books that way that maybe I wouldn't have otherwise read. So yeah. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know of your thoughts or feelings. <laughs> uh, yeah. And for your question of the day, tell me if you also feel overwhelmed by how many new books are coming out that look good. I think part of my problem is I read so widely across so many different genres and so there's always so many books that I want to read and I can never read them all. So it's it, it's an ongoing issue. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel and are so inclined you can check out the Patreon down below or check out channel memberships. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.